Hi, Nathan here again with another Adobe Lifecycle tutorial. Uh, today we're going to show how to create a table in Adobe Lifecycle that has um, the ability to grow and shrink based on user input. And so I'm going to go into my object library and I'm going to choose the table object. I'm going to click and drag and up pops this wizard that is called an insert table wizard and it just asks you how many rows and how many columns you want and we're going to say yes to the header. And we click OK. The table appears. And now we're going to do some configuration to it. First, we're going to stretch the table to dimensions we want, which is the full length of our form. And then we're going to look at how to give it the ability to expand row by row. First, we want to rename the table something intuitive and then we want to get down to business in the row that is going to be expanded and inside of this object tab there is a binding tab which has repeat row for each data item checkbox that needs to be checked first of all back on our uh, form over here we can click individual cells and give them certain attributes, like right now they're initially set to be just text boxes, and we can turn them into text fields, we can turn them into subforms, we can turn them into data objects, check boxes, whatever we want. In any standard object can exist inside of a table. We, and the, the most powerful of these, of course, is the subform object, because if we, if we make a cell a subform, then it becomes just like any other subform, or we can add and remove as many objects as we want to that and make it as big or as little as we need it. So in our tutorial here, we're going to make the first cell in our row a subform. And by doing that, we can add some content to that that's going to house the JavaScript that makes the, the functionality of the growing table work. Um, we want to set the subform to positioned so we can position objects inside of it. And then um, we want to set column two, and three cells to be text fields, which we've already done. And so now when we run the form, preview it, all we have is just a standard form that can be typed into and nothing fancy. And so we want to take what we have now and create a table that can, can expand. We've already done the first step, which is to tell which row we want to contain data and we want to grow. And we do this by selecting the row one, the non-header row, and then going to the binding tab of the object uh, palette, and we select repeat row for each data item. And right now we're going to set a maximum five and then an initial count of two. So when we run it uh, with those settings uh, set, now when the, we preview the PDF, it now has two rows here each that contain their own set of data. And it's grown bigger than it was the first uh, in the first instance. But we still don't have any control over this at runtime. And so what I want to show you now is how we can come in here and create uh, buttons that have JavaScript embedded in them that can cause the, the table to grow and shrink. And so what we're going to do inside of this cell number one here in row one is we're going to add a command button, and we're going to expand our view here so we can see what we're doing. That command button's name is going to be command add, and then we're going to copy and paste it because we want the same exact thing again. And we'll position this one right beside it. Sometimes uh, when you're when you're working in life cycle and you don't have um, a grid that's fine enough for what you're trying to do, um, you can use the drawing aids to make the grid interval, the XY interval, finer. That makes these dots closer together, so I can make more precise locations to my to my objects. Anyway, we're going to call this the minus button, and we're going to rename it Command delete. And 
so now we have two buttons inside of our row, inside of column one of our row or cell one of our row. And as we preview the PDF now, since we have our initial count of two turned on, it's going to duplicate anything we do in row one into row two. And so right now these buttons don't do anything, but they're there to give us the functionality we need. So now that we have everything on the page that we want, we're going to put some JavaScript into these buttons to create the motion we want at runtime. And so we're going to select Command Add, and we're going to turn on our script editor. Right now there's nothing in uh, this button. And we're going to go to the click event, and we're going to add code to the click event. So now that we've inserted our JavaScript, when we go into the form and preview it, the plus button now creates another instance of the row. That little JavaScript does the function for us. So in our code, we now have the remove instance. And when we run the form, we can add rows, and we can remove rows. So this gives us the basic functionality of adding and removing data rows to a table. But uh, I want to present a problem before we go today. If you look in the settings of the binding tab, remember I, I told you earlier that uh, we begin with a minimum count of one, a maximum count of five. If, let's say we took the maximum count away and previewed the form. By growing the table too large, it creates a problem for us in that it begins to eat up real estate taken by other objects. And so in our next tutorial, I'll cover how to make the form flow with this growing table so that you can grow it uh, exponentially as many pages as you need. So we'll do that next time. Uh, always remember our web address, truetechtroubleshooting.blogspot.com. And uh, remember that uh, there are other videos on Adobe Lifecycle. Also, uh, remember what we always remind our viewers, IT problems are usually simple, but they are never easy. We'll see you next time. Thanks.